Hi. Uh, welcome to this session about building powerful tools with language servers. My name is Luis Campos Guajardo. Uh, I work for Salesforce. Uh, I'm an engineer there. I'm basically working on the tools that you developers use. So if you're familiar with debug logs or the Visual Code uh, extensions, I'm part of that team. And um, before you get started, uh, basically, do your purchasing decisions based on what's out, not on what we could potentially show you. And um, I only got like 20 minutes. So what we're going to cover today is I'm going to explain what's a language server. I'm going to explain why we're using them, how you can leverage them as customers. And I'm going to do a, a quick demo on how to use a language server to provide Apex support on Atom. So with that being said, um, who, who here is a developer, by the way? OK, cool. So by now, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're aware that over the last years, we've grown accustomed to use very powerful tooling, very powerful features like uh, Eclipse, uh, Sublime, Atom. And by, and by powerful features, I mean things like uh, autocomplete or like go to definition. So let me just show you what, I, what I'm talking about. So when we're coding, it's, it's very cool that you can just like reference something and then on your code, and then just go to the, to the file that you want to work with. So for example, I can go and open immediately the, the other file that I'm referencing. I could just like start typing something and get auto completion for it and get some, some like feedback, immediate feedback. So those are the type of features that I'm talking about. Um, the way that those things work is basically you code them into, into your tool. So um, for those have, who have been using uh, the platform for some years, are aware that we were, we were giving you an experience to, through the uh, Eclipse plugin. And the way that we were building it was it's a, it's a Java plugin, and the go to definition and uh, uh, refactoring, everything was coded into that specific ID. If you wanted to use something like Sublime or Atom or VS Code, we basically would have had to rewritten everything. So when we started looking at this, we started seeing like, well, there's a big tooling offering now, and people have more options. And they don't necessarily want to go to Eclipse. They want to be able to have the flexibility of, of saying, like, well, I really like Sublime, or I really like Atom. I, wanna, I want that same experience there. So in the old paradigm, the old way that we were building things, that would, that would mean that we would have to rewrite every single feature for every single editor that you put, could potentially want to use. So we started thinking about, like, well, that's not a sustainable strategy. Because if we want to give you an experience in VS Code, by the time that we rewrite everything, you might have changed your mind. And you're like, well, I now like this other code editor. So we started thinking about, we want to do something where we can easily port it everywhere. We want to build it once and be able to run it everywhere. And that's where we, ran, uh, where we found this thing called the language server protocol. So a language server protocol is basically just a communication protocol between your tool and a language server, which is where, where you have like all these cool features, like your go-to definition, your autocomplete, all of those things. So this, this protocol uh, was created by Microsoft. It's an open protocol. It's constantly being um, uh, developed and, and maintained. And the communication happens in JSON. And this is very important because when we talk about tools, for example, if I wanted to do something for uh, Sublime, it's a, a specific language to write a plugin for it. If I want to do uh, IntelliJ or Eclipse, that's Java. If I want to do Atom or VS Code, that's, ja that's basically JavaScript, no JS. So every single language is able to communicate using JSON. And that's very powerful. Um, the other thing, the other benefit is that all of this uh, smartness, all of these cool features are basically at the server level. They're not coded into the plugin. So it's easily portable. Um, so let me explain how this thing works. So you have your development tool in one side. And then you have your language server. And this can be for things like Apex, for Visual Force, for Aura, for JavaScript, whatever you want. And the communication basically happens, as I said, through this uh, language server protocol that's basically just JSON RPC. Um, your tool doesn't do anything other than ask for things. It's just doing requests, just saying, like, hey, I need this thing. How, like, tell, tell me how I communicated to the user. So 
in this example, I'm basically having my tool say, like, hey, I need this definition. I want, and the user wants to go to this other file. And then the language server basically replies with the location on the file system, and you just open it through your, through your uh, editor, through your tool. Um, as I said, the language server is basically the place where you're going to be coding or where we code things like the go-to definition, the refactoring, the code navigation, all of these things. Um, and the adoption of language servers, even though it's a very recent protocol, it has like three or four years around, a little bit more, baby, um, has been great. And we're, we're talking about like 20 plus editors. I think I checked yesterday, it's actually like more than 50 languages are now officially supporting it. And there's more statistics on the official pages. But as you can see, like, the community is really engaged in this protocol because it's very simple to provide very powerful tooling for your languages across different platforms. So once, once, we, once we started like, doing this, we basically wanted to take it a little bit further with our tooling offering. And we started layering down the functionality um, and just breaking it apart, not having everything coded inside of a plugin. So, you're, you're aware of like, uh, the Salesforce API, like the tooling, the metadata, the enterprise. So that was kind of like the first thing that we did. And then on top of that, that wasn't enough because we wanted more and more uh, layered and less things coded specifically to, to one tool. So then we, we came up with the Salesforce CLI. And the Salesforce CLI allows you to have a lot of flexibility to do a lot of things uh, across APIs with a very similar and consistent interface. And then on top of that, we have the language servers, which is basically where we code uh, the go-to definition, all this smartness that we want to provide through the tools. And once we did this, it's basically giving us the option that if in the future we want to introduce a new tool, let's say like you customers say, tell Salesforce, like, you know what, this is cool, but I would like this experience on Vim, or I would like this experience on Sublime. Then the only thing that we need to do is basically adapt these, these other tools into using the layers that we already have. We don't have to recode um, the go-to definition. We don't have to recode the autocompletes. It's basically just doing some hookups into the plugin. Um, and with that, let me show you what I'm talking about. So uh, let me, OK. Let me close VS Code. So this is Atom. Um, for those of, of you who don't no Atom. It's basically an Electron application done by GitHub. It's all done with uh, Node.js, and it's basically JavaScript. And what I did here, I did a little bit of prep. I'm basically, um, I, I scaffolded a plugin for, for Atom. They have a, a CLI tool. I basically just said, like, create a plugin, and this is kind of like the file system that they give you. Um, they give you a folder for adding grammar, so I added the syntax highlighting for, for Apex. I also added the language server for Apex. This is the same uh, language server that we're shipping VS Code extensions with. And it's open source. So I basically just went to GitHub uh, and went to the repo. And I just copied these things into my local. And that was it. So the first thing that I want to show you is that this is not working yet. I haven't done anything other than like scaffolding a project for a plugin and copied some files. The only thing that you will get right now is um, the syntax highlighting for Apex. So if I, spin up, if I spin up a window and I select the DreamHouse uh, project, which by now I, I, I bet that you guys are already familiar with, um, you'll see that I have some syntax highlighting. But I don't have like, other cool stuff like, uh, we, I don't have like, proper uh, definitions here. So, oh, wait. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this, and I'm going to start hooking up the language server, the Apex language server, so I can get the same features that I showed on VS Code into Atom. The first thing that I do is I want to tell the, the language server which features I'm requesting. So I do it here on the package JSON. I'm basically going to say, like, hey, I want to have autocompletes. And I also want to be able to provide certain other features that are basically just scanning my code in my local and giving me more smartness. So I do this. And the other thing is, uh, right now I'm just defining which features I'm going to be enabling into the plugin. 
I haven't done anything with the language server yet. I, I need to start it. I need to be able to communicate with it. So on the package JSON, I, I have this target, this main target that's basically saying, like, the entry point for the plugin is the extension, uh, the, the extension file. And as you can see, I have no extension file. So what I'll do is I'll actually create the extension file here. And I'll save it into live, which is where I have the language server. So the first thing that I'll, I'll do is I, I save some snippets to go these, uh, on, on these really fast. But I'm basically just going to scaffold what this, this uh, plugin should do. So I start by extending the auto language client, which is basically a way of communicating with the language server. And, and you can see that I'm, I'm doing very, very simple stuff. I'm just defining what's the name of the language, what's the name of the server, and that's it. Uh, I have a target for starting the, the, the server process, but I haven't done anything with it yet. So let me add some uh, com more configuration, where I'm defining uh, the language server, the port in which it's going to be running, and the name of, of, of the class, how to, how to start it. And then on the, on the body of the, um, of the class, I'm basically going to initialize the server. So the, the empty target that I, re that I had previously is now getting the, the jar, getting the, the, langu the Apex language server, initializing a process on your computer, and passing the parameters where I'm going to be able to spin up the process and then communicate with it. Um, the other targets are basically just like, hey, this is, this is how you find the, the, the language server. This is how you uh, create or delete the, the stuff that the language server creates when you spin it up. So now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my development session. And I pick the DreamHouse project. And here's the window now. So as you can see, I, I have the, the syntaxes. But now I should be getting some like code completion. So you get these really cool features out of the box by just referring to the language server on your plugin. But it's not limited to that. So if I wanted to, like for example, if I wanted to refer to another class, like a bot controller, I get the bot controller and the autocomplete. And I also get the interfaces that the bot controller is exposing, like the submit interface. Um, as well, I can see like certain out outline, which is basically just powered by the language server scanning your project and telling the plugin, like, hey, you, you requested for this type of view. Here's the information. Show it however you want to show it. So that's, that's the power of the language server. Like you can easily port this very rich functionality across different platforms. Um, so with that, actually, I did it pretty fast. OK. OK, so with that, the takeaways is um, this is a communication protocol between your, your tool. In this case, it was an editor. And the, the, the language smartness features. Uh, it's, a, it's a protocol that's rapidly growing in support across languages and across editors. And as I said, like, it allows you to build it once and then reuse it everywhere that you want. Um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to publish these slides on, on the Agenda Builder. But if you want to take a look at or, or if you want to like, take pictures on these resources, this is basically the language server specification. The code that I just demoed is on GitHub. So you can like clone it. Uh, Use it if you want to use the Atom plugin. And then uh, the last uh, link is basically the link to where I got the language server and the syntax highlighting files, which is the VS Code extensions that we are shipping. And they're completely open source. Um, uh, as I said, like I did that pretty fast. So I have a few minutes for questions, if you guys have questions. And if not, I'll stick around. And oh, you had a question? Where is that from? Yes. So, so the, I'm, I'm going to repeat the question so everyone can listen. So the question is, like, where do I put the configuration so that the Atom, the Atom plugin knows how to communicate? 
OK, sure. Let me close this. So that configuration, like the features, uh, the go to definition and the, the outline view, is basically the configuration that I did on the package.json file. So if you take a look at this, I'm saying, like, hey, this is the feature that I want. I want autocomplete. And I want uh, definitions. And I want the outline view. Um, as I said, like, this is a protocol. The editor uh, supports it. So it's really simple when, when you're doing a language server and porting the functionality to a code editor that already supports the protocol. Because the, the way that it works is think about it as an API. So the editor already has like an interface where you're just defining the things that you want and then just providing the server in the location who is going to be the provider for whatever they ask, for whatever the, the tool asks for. Um, any other question? Yeah? Sorry? Does this work with Notepad++? With Notepad++. I don't know if Notepad supports the language server protocol. But if it does, it works. Yes. Yeah. Um, any other question? OK. Then I'll let you go early. <laughs> Have a nice Dreamforce.